go to the uh what are those ladies that wear like the red hats or whatever you call that the red hat society or whatever it is go, <laughs> go to go to those groups go to the women's knitting groups and stuff john okay, yeah. that sounds like a perfect place to go <laughs> that'd be perfect for you yeah. I could I could see you fitting right in on those groups. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Pillars of Wealth Creation, where we talk about creating financial success with a special focus on business and real estate. I'm your host, Todd Dexheimer. Now, let's get to it. Are you ready to start investing in real estate today, but don't know where to start? Sometimes investing can seem way too complicated, but it actually couldn't be any easier than with homeinvest.com. You know the co-founder and my friend, Nate Armstrong. He appeared on episode 20, and if you haven't heard it, go back and listen to it, episode number 20. Home Invest is a company that allows you to invest in turnkey real estate. Their goal is to build powerful investment tools that make real estate investing accessible to everyone. They have contractors and property managers available for you with the click of your mouse. While other real estate agents can only offer a property, Home Invest brings you a full turnkey package that allows you to diversify your investments, earn passive income, and start building equity in properties. Their simple, intuitive design allows newcomers and experienced investors alike to hit the ground running and to be able to choose the properties when they want and where they want. View easy to understand charts and data to allow you to buy in only a few clicks or just a simple phone call. With Home Invest, you'll be building your portfolio as quickly or as slowly as you would like. And right now, Home Invest is giving our listeners, Pillar of Wealth Creation listeners, a free course on how to finally win in real estate investing. So go to homeinvest.com forward slash pillars. That's homeinvest.com forward slash pillars to claim your free course today. Hey, welcome back to another Hump Day Hustle. I'm your host, Todd Dexheimer, and with me, as always, is John Stiles with Bridge Realty. John, how are you doing? I'm doing really great, Todd. Um, just recently, I celebrated my 12th year wedding anniversary. Uh, July 1st, so write that down for next yeah. year. Now. <laughs> yeah, give you a card. <laughs> um, Some chocolates. <laughs> right, right. So we're, you know, quite, it's not like a unique 10-year, 20-year milestone, but still 12 years seems like a long time. Yeah. So, but we're, so we're good. Um, we got 24 hours away from the kids, <laughs> which was, you know, a staycation, good, good enough for us. So. <laughs> cool, cool. Well, that's exciting. 12 years is longer than the average uh, couple makes it. So you've made it, you've made it that far. That's good. Yep, yep. <laughs> we'll be actually uh, 12 years come in uh, January. Oh yeah. yeah. Cool. So yeah, cool. What about um, yourself? You went camping recently, right? Yeah. Well, so, <laughs> so we took off on Saturday to go camping, right? So we, we went to, we actually went to my sister-in-law's because her daughter was having a, a birthday party, three-year-old birthday party. And, and so they have a couple hours away. We went there. We're going to do, do the birthday, and then we're going to camp. And so we do the birthday. We get to our campground later uh, and kind of set up. And this campground, it was just not that great. And, and we had planned on being there Saturday night, Sunday night, Monday night, and then leaving sometime on Tuesday. And, and uh, so I've got this um, 120 unit that I've been kind of mentioning and, and I'm just starting the capital raise. And I still was wanting to do my webinar or was doing my webinar. I scheduled it for uh, Monday last week. And I'm sitting here going, how am I going to do this webinar? I figured out I could do it at my sister-in-law's place and, and that would work out just fine. But my wife also, her company sold and another company bought it. And my wife now tr is transitioning. She's a sales uh, rep. And so she's transitioning all her clients from her old company to this new company. And, and that's a lot of work. And yet she's still trying to create a little bit of business. And she's taking over some other accounts that she didn't have 
previously. So she's like busy as can be. I'm trying to do this capital raise and anybody who's ever done a capital raise knows it's really stressful. Uh, or at least it is for me because you want to make sure you raise the money. You know, and I'm not raising a ton of money, but it's still, it's like, I got to make sure I get this money. And it's a fairly quick raise. Um, so all this is going on anyway, and we're supposed to be camping. We're supposed to be enjoying ourselves with our <laughs> kids and having fun. And, and both of us are just like, I don't know, we're going to be working all day Sunday and all day Monday. And like, I, I go for a run on uh, Sunday morning, um, you know, get up early and go for a run and, and uh, then go for a swim. And, and I get I'm like, just get done. I got all this time to kind of think because the kids aren't up and I don't want to disturb anybody. I'm like, we just got to go home. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's, it. I feel bad for the kids because they love camping, but at the same time, it was going to be like, it, it was just going to be actually bad for the kids because they were going to be bored because we're going to be on our computers the whole time trying to work. We've got bad service. So it's good. It's frustrating. So we packed up on, uh, on Sunday, we spent the whole day there Sunday. And then we actually left our kids at my sister-in-law's because their grandma was there too. And she lives she actually has to drive basically right by her house to get to her house, which is another couple hours past our house. So, so we left the kids with grandma so they could hang, all hang out together with their cousin. And, all, and so they actually benefited even more because they, <laughs> and, and we had a babysitter for that, for that day too. So that was great as well. So, that, so anyways, long story short, or maybe even longer, um, Monday we, we were back, we worked, and then Tuesday we worked, and then we left on Tuesday evening to go camping again in a different spot, which we had planned on uh, going from this one campground to uh, one of my buddy's lake places, actually, uh, where, we, where we camped. Um, and uh, so we camped through Thursday and then came home and, and worked on Friday uh, instead of coming home on Saturday, which we were planning on doing. So... Uh, Camping, yes, but not quite as extended as we originally had planned, but it, it worked out better. Uh, it was just, it would have been way too much stress trying to make this all happen in areas that we don't get good service and yeah. it just, just needed to happen. So, yeah. So that can be really tough uh, just balancing, we talk about it all the time, balancing that work and the family and yeah both in there right well and i feel bad because i i try to try not to let work kind of get in the way of stuff like that but this doesn't happen like you know it doesn't happen all the time it'd be different if it happened all the time i'm doing this capital raise and i'm, I'm stressed and my wife has you know her thing going on and, and you know that's not normal for her right uh she's like the glue that holds us together so when she's busy you know the wheels fall off the off the vehicle so uh hopefully she gets back to normal i keep on telling her like, you got to get back to back to the normal here because you're the one that holds this whole family together <laughs> it's not me <laughs> so uh, but yeah it uh you know it's just just the way to go so anyway so yeah i'm doing this capital raise and um uh, i'm actually going to open it up it's it's uh we're doing a score offering so we're going to be opening it up to uh, Minnesota residents can invest in it um, without a pre-existing relationship. So I can publicly advertise to Minnesota residents. Uh, if they're out of state, out of the state of Minnesota, I have to already have an existing relationship with them in order for them to invest, just like normal. But if they're in state, they, they don't have to be accredited and they don't have to have a, a pre-existing relationship and they can actually invest with me and it's going to be the first of its kind in the state. So kind of excited about it, putting it up on the, on the portal and uh, you know, seeing how it goes. It, it likely won't get a massive amount of traction because it's really quick. Um, you know, we just started the offering and we're going to be closing it on June 20, like 23rd, 24th. Um, so it's July, July, July. Yeah. So it's, it's really quick, but um, you know, who knows? Get, get some traction. We're just excited to have the first of its kind offering in the state. So, Cool. So uh, can people see that right now on the portal? 
So I don't believe it's quite on the portal yet. We're trying to get a couple, we have to get a couple last things and we had to send it, you have to send it into the state for approval. And of course, last week with the fourth, you know, nobody's around. So I believe it got submitted to the state. Uh, I know it got submitted to the state last week. I think it was either Tuesday or Thursday that it got submitted and it probably is in review process right now. Likely, likely will be active tomorrow, but, uh, you know, maybe, maybe Wednesday. Um, I don't know. So by the time this airs on Wednesday, I think it'll be active and live. Cool. Yeah. So that, that can, if anybody wants to see it, uh, whether you want to invest in it or not, but if you just want to see it and see all the documents and all that kind of stuff, um, it'll be on land.mn. And then we'll put a link to it on the show notes too. So if people just want to check it out, just to kind of see what's going on, they, they can. Of course, they are welcome to invest in it, but um, just to kind of see the whole process, I think it'd be really interesting for any listener to check that out. And, uh, Definitely. Yeah. So. And are you going to be any, do any marketing um, to drive traffic to that portal? Yeah. So, so we'll do, you know, some Facebook advertising, some LinkedIn stuff, some other social media type. Uh, probably try to call some, uh, it, like I said, it's really quick, so I don't know, but we'll probably try to call some news stations, see if they can, um, you know, talk about it because it is the first of its kind uh, in the state. So try to grab a little bit of traction on it and uh, some awareness too. I think the biggest, my biggest goal is to get awareness that this is actually a thing. Um, yeah. that you can do this score type offering in the state of Minnesota. Um, and that, that, you know, it's possible and you can get accredited, non-accredited investors involved and, you know, uh, and, and they can become involved. So. Well, that's really neat that you're the first doing it. Um, is it, why is it that you're the first, um, what's, what's different about it? Oh, uh, because I'm really awesome. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, uh, I just, I'm the first real estate, um, venture doing it. I, I think there's been some non real estate um, that, has, that has done it, but I believe I'm the first real estate. Now, there may be somebody before me. I don't, I, but I don't think so. Uh, and, and why it's pretty new, right? Uh, I think it, 2017 was the first year you could do it. Um, so it is fairly new. Um, and I don't, I don't really know why more people aren't doing it, I guess, uh, just because, you know, it's not necessary, right? Uh, I wouldn't have to do this. And it, it is going to cost me a little bit more money to do it. Uh, not a ton, uh, but just a little bit more to do it. So I think if you've got your own in-network, you know, why do it? A, a lot of people think that way. Uh, but to me, it's, it's the way of the future or potentially the way of the future. And anytime you can be ahead of the curve on something, I think you, I think the better. So maybe it'll evolve and change and likely it will. But if I'm on the leading front, I think that's only going to add value uh, in the end to my company and, and to my investors as well. Yeah, I, I agree that, you know, you can make kind of make a little bit of a name for yourself in doing this first and then grow more attraction or, or awareness of what you're doing for not only this particular raise, but others in the future. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. If, if, if people know your name, you know, that you hear it over and over. Like I was, I was listening to um, uh, Gary Vanderchuk uh, crush it. And he's talking about, you know, all these, you know, podcasting or whatever. It doesn't, doesn't matter what it is. Uh, but the first people that started doing podcasting, their numbers grew really rapidly and really quickly. And then now they maintain their, their audience base and continue to, to grow. But pe somebody like me who didn't start it until later in the game and people that started it behind me even, and, and maybe are just thinking about getting started, are going to have a harder time gaining listener base and 
capturing that audience because it's already getting to be a crowded space. I still think there's some room, but it's getting to be a pretty crowded space. And so just because I, I waited, let's say, what did I start my podcast? It's 2017. And, and if I would have started in 2014, it would have been a totally different ball game just because of the, you know, the newness. And so just think about that. That's just a few years and the difference things change. So with what things grab on pretty quick and, and uh, all of a sudden it's a crowded space and now your name's not, it's just another name in the space. So. Yeah. Well, that just means that you have to be really focused on, on who your audience is and what your niche is niche, yeah. niche or niche. Um, just, um, it's not, I mean, people should still be doing podcasts. I mean, I've heard yes. it said yes. that yes. it's going to become more and more common that you are producing a podcast than people who are not producing a podcast. So it's kind of like, you know, everybody should have a website, right? And everybody should have a Facebook page, right? Everybody should now have a podcast. Well, I don't know if everybody should, but. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think there will be. If that happens, I think it'll just be noise um, yeah. because there's only so much valuable content you can create that other people haven't created and people want to listen to you. And so to me, it's not really well, podcasting isn't for everyone. It's for people who, uh, you know, enjoy being in front of a, a microphone, enjoy interviewing people, enjoy, you know, doing that. But if you're kind of that person that doesn't enjoy it, I don't know that it's necessarily for you. It does, it does get pushed uh, quite a bit to do a podcast and podcasts are powerful, but it's not necessary for everyone. However, I think you should be in front of people, whether that's through a podcast, whether that's through your blog, whether that's through YouTube videos, whatever it is, I think you should be in front of people. And I think an educational platform is really, really valuable. Uh, if you're going to educate people, you're going to have a lot better time. You know, let's say you're a salesperson. Uh, if you can educate versus just try to sell, you're going to, it's an unfair advantage. I mean, you're going to win every time as, as being an educator. Um, so I, whether it's a podcast or whether it's a TV type uh, platform or even a blog, whatever, I think getting there and getting your word out is really important. Um, well, let's, let's move on to kind of today's topic, which is a little bit, you know, kind of what we're just talking about. So, uh, you want to introduce it, John, you kind of came up with it and, and the reasoning behind it. Yeah. Well, you know, I had some time on the road yesterday. I was, um, taking two of my oldest kids to summer camp. And so I listened to a few different podcasts and one of which was, uh, JLD's, uh, entrepreneurs on fire. Um, and so the topic that was being discussed was knowing the avatar for your ideal client or ideal audience. And in the specific conversation, they were talking about podcasts, but it could definitely should apply to any type of business that you're in. Yeah. Um, and there's many different businesses, podcasts that reach a wide range of people and personalities. Um, but so JLD was really recommending that you narrow it down to one specific persona, um, all the way down to the gender of the person, the, um, the age, the marital status, the, how many kids they have, um, and even putting a name on this person. Um, just because at that point, then whenever you th make decisions about your company or your podcast or your content or whatever, if you always keep your ideal uh, avatar, ideal client in mind, then you're going to be consistently producing and making decisions that are consistent with that ideal person. Hmm. So, you know, just listening to that, you know, it was really interesting to hear, but go ahead. Well, I, I think that's interesting to narrow it down that specifically. Um, 
maybe it's a great practice. I think you want to, I, I worry about p- pigeonholing yourself a little bit doing that. Uh, but as you and I kind of talked about before we record it, and you, I guess you just kind of mentioned is you want to know your ideal client, ideal listener, ideal, you know, um, audience, but you also need to understand that other people might enjoy the content. So as I said, uh, just because I'm positioning myself in this podcast to a certain, you know, listener base doesn't mean that the, uh, you know, the, the 50 year old auto mechanic can't enjoy this podcast. And doesn't mean that I'm going to say, well, don't listen to my podcast because I'm a 50-year-old auto mechanic, even though I'm not catering towards that. You know, if I were to say, who is my, who is my listener, it would be the, you know, 40-ish-year-old uh, male, um, likely, a, likely either a um, more higher level, or I don't even know if I want to say higher level, but um, higher income, you know, employee or, or entrepreneur who is, you know, just looking to grow and, and develop their business. Um, you know, that's probably less specific than, than JLD was talking about. He would, he would have me put a name to it. He would have me say, you know, what are they doing? Well, in my case, likely a real estate investor, likely a multifamily real estate investor. Uh, with that said, I, I think there's a lot of people listening that are female, probably less than males, just because of that's the statistic in the industry, especially. Um, I would say there's plenty of people between the age of you know, 20. Uh, I, I actually know there's a group of, of uh, you know, college students age students that listen to this. Um, so there, there's younger people and I, I can almost guarantee there's going to be people in their sixties and seventies and maybe even older than that listening to it too. Um, and, and then there's, there's, you know, all kinds of different races, of course, listening and, and there's people from different countries listening. So, uh, and I welcome all those people. And so I, I get, nervous pigeonholing too much because it's like, I don't want to exclude people, you know, at the same time. But I do get his point where you want to know exactly who you're talking to because that's who is, you know, that you should be focused on providing the best content for that person. So who, what do they want? And that's why I've asked several times, you know, I think as we've done this, um, on Facebook, I've said it before, like, what do you, what do you want as a listener? What are you looking for? What do you want? What do you want me to talk about? Who do you want me to interview? Tell me who, you know, give, give me a, a list of some guests that you really want on the show. Uh, you know, what we've talked about a few, we've had people reply on Facebook and, and maybe other places um, saying they want us to talk about certain things and we have. So, you know, um, I think that's really important is trying to figure out what does your audience really want? Cause I can just talk until my face turns blue, but it doesn't mean anybody cares. Right. And I, I think I have a similar, um, sit, you know, mindset where I want to include anybody, everybody. I want to reach everybody. I, I kind of have had this mindset and at some points in my career, you know, all things real estate or your one-stop shop for real estate. Well, you know, that sounds nice, but who am I really reaching if I'm the one-stop shop? Am I, am I really speaking to the needs of my ideal client if I'm the one-stop shop? Hmm. Uh, or in the example of the, the podcast that I listened to, the, the caller who had asked this question of JLD, he was doing his own podcast. And at first he said his ideal audience was ages 13 to 20. Uh, young entrepreneurs, um, and that, that was the extent of his audience that he, that he thought of his audience. But, and he helped, and JLD helped him narrow it down because if you think about it, the mindset of a 13 year old is far different from the right. mindset of a 20 year old. Also, their life problems, life issues are far different. Um, 
So how is this podcast term truly going to reach that whole broad range of people? Um, yeah, I mean, that's, that especially is very different. You know, like, like you said, if I'm talking to, well, even, even in my case, you know, I've got, I've got college age students that listen to this and I've got people that are either retired or retiring listening to this. Their needs are a lot different than the 40 year old. And if I'm going to talk with specifically to the college students, I'm going to be giving some different advice. It might be a lot of similar advice, but it's going to be catered differently than if I'm talking to the 40 year old or versus, or if I'm talking to the 60 year old that either just retired or is retiring, those are all different stages of life where we need to think about things differently. We can be more aggressive or less aggressive. Um, with our investing, we can be, you know, as a 20 year old taking risks, it's so easy. If you've got no, no wife, no kids or husband, whatever, if, if you're not married and you don't have kids and you've got no house, basically very few responsibilities, you can take all kinds of risks. You can fall flat on your face and, and lose because, well, you probably don't have a lot to begin with right? If you're 20 years old, you don't have a lot to start with. So, so if you lose everything, is it really that big of a deal? No, because you can start right over again because you're young and you got a lot of time. But if you're 65 and I tell you to go take a lot of risks and same type of thing, and you, you lose everything, well, that could be a lot and it, you may not be able to recover. It's going to take you a long time to recover and you know it's probably a probably a poor decision so yeah knowing who you're talking to especially when you're looking at you know ages of your audience is really important for sure yeah so it's, it's a really interesting exercise i thought and just made me think a lot um yeah you know for me one of the audiences that i'm trying to market myself to um because of the fact that i have many people in my sphere who would like to buy apartment buildings, but the problem here and anywhere is finding those sellers. Mm -hmm. So um, as I think through my ideal audience in that regard, and, and as it relates to my marketing, you know, if I was to put a persona to my ideal apartment seller, that might be somebody who's recently retired, uh, maybe somebody who's frustrated with owning an apartment building because uh, it's not quite working out the way they thought it would. Um, maybe somebody who, uh, because they're retiring, maybe they're wanting to move away. Maybe they were self-managing, but they you know, need to free up their time for something else. So I don't know, I could go down, try to figure that out further too, but that just helps me as I think through my marketing as well. So probably the biggest seller right now, I would think in multifamily. Um, so multifamily to me has two main groups. It has people under 40 that are buying, and then it has people over probably 60, 65 that have bought. Mm -hmm. um, for some reason, there's a to me, at least in my perception, there's a big gap between 40 and 60 year olds that just didn't buy apartments. I don't, I don't know, I don't know why, or if it's just my imagination making it up. Um, but to me, the, the, the person that you could be marketing, there's a couple of different people, of course, and you can focus on it. But one, one of the biggest things is focusing on recently widowed uh, females because those older males were the ones buying the apartments and, and then when they pass, because they're 75 now to, to 85 years old, 90 years old, when they pass, now the widow is looking to potentially sell. And so that, to me, that would be a very big uh, niche to be looking for is, and I've been, you know, doing marketing uh, for several apartments and three of my recent uh, marketing attempts and I've gotten good contact and good feedback. Uh, I'm actually going to be meeting with one widow um, to try to purchase the apartment building. Um, 
it, that's been exactly that. And, and they, their husbands have left them with these apartment complexes. So yep. now, so, um, a couple of them have been, uh, the, the, uh, the, you know, dad passes and then it gets handed down to, you know, the, the uh, his, his, you know, wife, but it's also now taken care of by the kids. Um, so sometimes that might not be the perfect uh, fit, but it's, a, it's definitely a fit. Um, other than that, I would say it's like the 75 year old male. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and the, if you want to even go even deeper, I'd say the 75 year old white male, Jim, you know, that's who it is. You know, not now today's buyers are all kinds of races. I mean, you, you've got a lot of, uh, lot of, well, a lot of every, everybody buying, but back then it was mostly white males. Yep. So. Yeah. And so if, once you identify that person, then I got to think to myself, what's the best way for me to reach that person? Is it through content marketing or is it through just direct mail or is it through uh, relationship marketing? I don't know, you know, all these different ways to potentially reach them and what exactly is the message? What is my solution to their problem? Um, Go to the, uh, what are those ladies that wear like the red hats or whatever you call that? The red hat society or whatever it is. Go, <laughs> go, to, go to those groups. Go to the women's knitting groups and stuff, John. Right, yeah. That sounds like a perfect place to go. <laughs> Do some networking there. I think it's like the Red Hat Society or something. Like I can't remember the name of it, but the, yeah, the, all these older women show up, and uh, that'd be perfect for you. Yeah. I could I could see you fitting right in on those <laughs> groups. <laughs> uh, I was actually talking, so I met with the just a little off our topic. Uh, but it reminded me when we're talking about the women's group is uh, I was looking at a property in Minneapolis with, with a friend and uh, he's looking at buying it. And I was there potentially as, as a, as a partner of some capacity. Um, anyway, so we met several people and one of them was a, was a female um, who, man, talk about an impressive person. She's in a very male dominant uh, field contracting. Uh, and she's just, feisty as can be and just doing really well. I mean, very impressive. Um, that's always fun to see. But anyways, these guys showed up to the, some women's only networking event. <laughs> and that's how they like met her for the first time. And I, I just thought that was really cool. She was like, yeah, we're, it was great. It was just fine. And we, we, we were happy to have you there. Uh, <laughs> Just kind of funny though to, to hear that, and it's like, oh, you know what? You don't always have to fit in perfectly to a networking event, and sometimes if you don't fit in, and you're unique, that's actually a good thing. I mean, to it, you know, to an extent, right? To to, yeah. to a fault, uh, you know, if you're if you're going to a networking event that's meant for, you know, whatever, certain a doctor, and you're, you know, not a doctor, well, that <laughs> might be a little odd, but. Um, but at the same time, I mean, I think sometimes going a little to networking events that you maybe you don't fit into perfectly is actually a good thing. Yeah, I mean, as long as you've got some value to add, right? Or in going with a, a learning uh, mindset as well. Yeah. So. Or can go with somebody that you know that goes to that event too. That can be really powerful as well as if you can get those introductions. So, if, if you are a, a real estate investor. Uh, doctors enjoy passively investing in real estate um, for obvious reasons. They're high net worth individuals usually. Uh, they make good income and they're very, very busy. Um, so if you, can, if you have a doctor friend and they're going to networking events and you can tag along with your doctor friend, now you're the unicorn in the room um, and you've got a reason you're there, right? Your friend invited you, not just you're just some weirdo that showed up. Yep. So right now we're looking for a friend of mine that belongs to the Red Hat Society. <laughs> Which, so that you can be the about. unicorn. Perfect. <laughs> yep. awesome. Yeah. So we got it out of, off of several topics, but, um, but to wrap it up, I mean, 
first of all, be the unicorn in the room. I think that's really important. I think that it's actually something we didn't really intend to talk to, but that's, that's very important. And then also know your, know your audience, know your market very, very detailed and understand who you're talking to, you know, uh, as detailed as, as, very, as possible. I would write it down, challenge everybody to write it down, write that a perfect ideal audience, ideal customer, ideal whoever you're dealing with down to a T. Understand that you're going to have a broader reach than just that one person, but understand who you're talking to and then think about their needs. What are their needs? What are they looking for? If you're that person and go find that person, if you don't know, you know, go, go find the 40 year old male, um, you know, entrepreneur with three kids and a wife and you know, lives in the suburbs or whatever it is, uh, go find that person and find out what their needs are. Yeah, just quickly, the one other benefit of, of having this really focused uh, avatar is that when somebody else hears your either your advertising or your podcast or whatever it is, and they're not that person, but they but they clearly recognize who your audience is, then they might think of somebody else that is your audience and refer that person to you. Oh, that's a good point. Great point. Yeah, referrals are and referrals are very very valuable, right? Because if um, I always want referrals. I mean, if somebody, somebody thinks this is going to add value to somebody else, this podcast can add value to somebody else. Well then share it out to them. Um, those are your best sources as the referrals for sure. So cool. Uh, well, I think that's it, John. We'll wrap up on those two kind of notes and, uh, we'll, again, we'll link the, um, the score offering to, I'm hoping we'll have it live on Wednesday. So if it's live on Wednesday, I can link it. If it's not live, uh, we'll link it, but the link will come up after, you know, a day later or whatever. Uh, if you, if you want to get it more information and, and the link isn't here, when you listen to it, you don't want to come back to the show and try to grab the link. Uh, you can go on to uh, our, my website, venture, uh, D properties.com it's venture and then D as in, as in Dexheimer, um, properties.com. And, uh, there you can, um, at, get onto our subscriber list. You can get an email that, that'll actually, so I can read it and just say, Hey, send me more information. Uh, and then we'll provide you with the link once that's active. So. Sounds good. And then, uh, everybody else who, Everybody who's been listening, we really appreciate your feedback. Uh, it'd be great if everybody can comment below either the YouTube video or on the Facebook uh, page. Just tell us who your avatar is, and that would be really interesting to see who all uh, you are marketing to and who your audience is. Yeah, and, and tell us what you're looking for as well. You know, we if we have a maybe, – maybe I'm off on my – maybe I'm off on who I – who we're talking to. You know, maybe we're talking to more, maybe we're talking to a 35 year old female. Um, and, and if that's the case, I want to know that. So if you're listening to this, just tell us who you are. Uh, you don't have to give us your social security or anything like that. <laughs> just tell us who you are. And tell us what your interests are. Hey, I want to, you know, I, I'm this person and I want to uh, learn about, you know, multifamily, or I want to learn about, you know, building a business or, or whatever it is. And so we can kind of get a, a gauge on who our actual ideal audience is, and then we can start catering this more to them. So. Sounds good. Awesome. Well, John, you have a great rest of the day. Make every day a Saturday. You too. Are you ready to start investing in real estate today, but don't know where to start? Sometimes investing can seem way too complicated, but it actually couldn't be any easier than with homeinvest.com. You know the co-founder and my friend, Nate Armstrong. He appeared on episode 20, and if you haven't heard it, go back and listen to it, episode number 20. Home Invest is a company that allows you to invest in turnkey real estate. Their goal is to build powerful investment tools that make real estate investing accessible to everyone. They have contractors and property managers available for you with the click of your mouse. While other real estate agents can only offer a property, Home Invest brings you a full turnkey package that allows you to diversify your investments, 
earn passive income and start building equity in properties. Their simple, intuitive design allows newcomers and experienced investors alike to hit the ground running and to be able to choose the properties when they want and where they want. View easy to understand charts and data to allow you to buy in only a few clicks or just a simple phone call. With Home Invest, you'll be building your portfolio as quickly or as slowly as you would like. And right now, Home Invest is giving our listeners, Pillar of Wealth Creation listeners, a free course on how to finally win in real estate investing. So go to homeinvest.com forward slash pillars. That's homeinvest.com forward slash pillars to claim your free course today.